Hi, hope everyone is doing well. In this video, we are going to take an EC2 instance, a Windows 2016 server instance, and set up Active Directory and DNS on it. So right here on the desktop, I've got an Amazon Windows Server 2016 instance. Uh, it is this instance right here. I'll bring this over. So this is one of the free tier instances. And you see right here, it's a T2 micro, which is a free tier. And this instance is the Windows Server 2016. We're going to set up Active, Active Directory on this instance. If you're curious how to set up AWS EC2 for free instances or how to uh, connect to it via remote desktop, that's a different video. I'll put a link beneath this video to that one. The first thing we want to do is go to the start button here and we're going to want, want to run server manager. So, so server manager is how you add roles and features to your Windows server. So right now this system is not a domain controller. So we want to click on add roles and features. There's a little wizard here. It'll walk you through. So we're going to do role-based or feature-based installation. This is the only server we have in our server pool. So I'm going to click next here. And right here, we're presented with some options. It gives you the role along with the description on the right over here. The role is what we're going to select. So the role we're missing is this role right here. I'll go back. Active Directory Domain Services. So if I highlight the role, it gives you a little bit of information about it right here. This is the role we want to select. So I'll click on this. And then we get this dialog box right here that says we also need to add this other stuff to this server in order for the role we just selected, which is the Active Directory domain services to work. So basically these are like dependencies. So go ahead and click on add features. And we'll go ahead and click on next. Go ahead and click on next again here. Click on next. There's a checkbox right here. You can check if you want to restart the server uh, automatically if a restart is required. We'll, we'll leave that unchecked for now. Go ahead and click on install. This may take a couple seconds here. It looks like the installation succeeded. Right here we get a message. So there's a few additional steps. We have to promote the server to a domain controller, which we'll do in a minute. So go ahead and click on close here. So it sounds like the next step is to promote it to a domain controller. So there's a couple ways to do that. On the dashboard over here, I'm going to go to ADDS right here. And this gives us a little bit of information, um, but we also get a warning here, this little exclamation point configuration required for active directory domain services on the server. Click on more here. It gives you some details about that. Post de deployment configuration not started. And then it even gives you an action. So if you forget what to do, it tells you pretty much exactly. The action says to promote this server to a domain controller. So even though we've set up active directory uh, domain services, we still have to configure this machine as a domain controller. So I click on this link here and it walks us through another wizard here, the deployment configuration. So we have three choices right here. Add a domain controller to an existing domain. We do not have an existing domain. Add a new domain to an existing forest. We do not have an existing forest. Or add a new forest. We are going to add a new forest because we don't have anything set up in our AWS environment. 
the root domain name, we can call this whatever you want. I'll call this one, we'll just call it test.com, or actually we'll call it point break dot test. How's that? Uh, we can do a dot test domain to, so we know it's not a real domain. Click on next. It's going to ask us the functional level. Since we only have a 2016 server, we might as well make it Windows Server 2016. If you need some compatibility with older domains or in older domain controllers, you could put in like Windows Server 2008, for instance. Ideally, you do not do that because that does introduce some security vulnerabilities. So we'll leave this at 2016. We mentioned earlier about DNS. So it says to specify the domain controller capabilities and DNS is checked automatically. This is because Active Directory with Windows is integrated with DNS. We wanna leave the global catalog checked. We can't uncheck it because this is the first server. And we need to put a password in here for the directory services restore mode. I'll just make up a password here. I can type and there's even a button here if you want to learn more about these options so all we did is type in a password we left everything as the default uh, looks like my password doesn't meet the complexity requirements so I need to add a strong password so let me make something super strong here with a bunch of complexity garbage. Even though passwords are pretty antiquated. Click on next. A delegation for this DNS server cannot be created because the authoritative parent zone cannot be found. That's because we do not have a DNS server. I can click on more info we get this box right here. This box basically tells us that it's trying to find the existing point break dot test domain, but one does not exist. So effectively we're going to create it. So I'll go ahead and click on next here. Verify the net BIOS name. Uh, we can leave that, uh, as point break that's fine just took a second to pop up there it's just the sub the domain name without the ex extension these are typically fine unless you want to modify those go ahead and click on next and it should take a little bit of time to do this it looks like all the prerequisite checks passed here so it says click install to begin the installation. And you can see the results right here if you want to like review this, but let's just go ahead and click on install. Again, this will take a couple minutes as well. Ah, it looks like it's restarting. So it'll take a couple minutes, a couple minutes for that to restart. You can continue to try to connect to it with remote desktop client and see when it comes up. It looks like it's uh, finally starting to come back up. This is the system I just remote desktoped into it again. And we see it's uh, at the please wait for the group policy client. This may take a few minutes here. So just have some patience. All right, it looks like this is finally rebooted and started up. So now this should be a domain controller and it should be running DNS. All right, looks like it's finally come up. So let's try this again. And now this should be a domain controller. So let's go under Windows Administrative Tools. You notice this is new now. Let's click on that. And we've got a bunch of new stuff here and it all looks to be 
related to Active Directory, which is what we wanted. We also see DNS is new. So it looks like this worked. Let's go to Active Directory users and computers right here. This is kind of the main interface to Active Directory. Here's the domain we set up, point break .test. I'll click on that. We've only got one computer that's part of it. It's the domain controller right here. But if we wanted to add another computer, we could add it here. We can also add users here. So here are the default groups and users. If we wanted to add a separate user, we could add it right here. Right click, new, user, and again, we have all these options right here. So I'm going to add uh, a new user here. We'll call it Bodhi. I think I forgot to spell Bodhi. I think it's like that. And then the logon name will be Bodhi as well. Bodhi was the uh, one of the main characters in Point Break. Click on Next. Here's what it asks you for a password and some of the options. Typically, you set up a default password here and make it so the user has to change it at the next logon. So we'll do that. And then you would communicate the default password to the user. All right. Yeah, it didn't like that password. I didn't think it would. So we have to put in a bunch of bogus complexity garbage such as uh, p at 55w0rd p at 55w0rd see if it liked that one it accepted that one so here's Bodhi and now I can double click on Bodhi and you can see what he's a member of, only the domain users. But if you wanted to add Bodhi to another group, you, you could click on group here or add and select the group. So let's do a couple of tests. Uh, let's go to DNS manager. So I went to start and remember that was one of the new ones. Let's go to Windows Administrator, Administrative Tools, then the DNS. And this is the server that we're managing. And we should only have one forward lookup zone, which is pointbreak.test. And under here will be all the records for pointbreak.test. Uh, the only record we have so far is this one. This is the this server on the domain controller. But we could add a new record if we wanted to. Can right click on it, add a new host which the single A is IPv4, the four A's is IPv6. We can click on that and we'll just make up a new name here for this server. We'll call it uh, California. So California.pointbreak.test. And the IP address, we're gonna make it the IP address of this system here. So let's do a Go to the command prompt and do a IP config. It is 172.31.37.68. I'm gonna right click on this one or highlight it here. Right click on it, which will copy it. I'm gonna paste that right here. Control V. I'm gonna create a PTR record as well, which is the reverse. The a, a record does a host name to IP address. A PTR record does a IP address to a host name. Click on add host. Done. Now we have California. So now I can go to command prompt. And let's do a couple tests here. Let's type in NS lookup. And right now, our server is our local host. So we're using the local system as a domain, uh, sorry, as a DNS server. So I should be able to look up California. So I type in California.pointbreak.test. Let's see what happens. And we get the IP address back. If I try Nevada.pointbreak.test, nothing comes back. 
because we are authoritative for pointbreak.test and there is no Nevada in this domain. If I try google.com, we resolved it because we actually went out to Google. Um, or we, this DNS server performed the lookup on Google. So here's Google's IPv6 address and, and IPv4 address. Now that we've verified DNS is working, let's uh, log off and see if we can log on as Bodhi, a normal user. And real quick, I'll just click on this and we'll do a sign out. So now that we logged off, let's try to log back on. But we're going to try to log on as the Bodhi account. And remember, if I click on edit here, it should let me edit the credentials. I'm going to do more choices, a different account. We'll type in uh, point break slash B. That's the domain Bodhi. And the initial password is P at 55W0RD, I believe. Click on OK. Click on connect. Let's see what happens. So we get the message that we expected. You must change your password before logging on for the first time. Please update your password or contact support. So we can't do it from here. Um, but if we were logging on with a client, we would be able to change the password. But it looks like it worked and we were able to add Bodhi to that domain. In this video, we set up Active Directory on a Windows Server 2016 system. And we also set up DNS. We validated DNS works and we valid validated we were able to add a user to Active Directory and verified that work as well worked as well. We did all this on AWS EC2 you know, ideally, in an, operationally, you would have a large enterprise network where you would set up a domain controller, typically more than one, and then you would set up the clients to connect to the domain controller, and the users would log on to the domain controller via Active Directory, and then you'd manage those users and their computers via group policy. If you have any questions or comments about the video, please leave, the, leave them beneath. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and we'll, we will talk to you later. Thank you.